Have you ever taken a blurry photo with your digital camera? If so, the chances are that your photo was simply out of focus. In many cases, your camera will do an excellent job automatically deciding where to focus. But there are also times when it fails and your photos end up blurry. So if you want to take tack sharp, stunning photos every time, it's important that you know how to set the focus yourself. My name is Mark Hemmings, and I'm an internationally recognized photographer and photography instructor. And in this video, I will show you how to correctly set the focus on your digital camera so you never take a blurry photo again. The first thing you need to know is that there are three main focus modes on your digital camera. Single shot autofocus is for still scenes where your subject is not moving, such as landscapes, architecture, and portraiture. Also, continuous autofocus is for photographing moving subjects like sports and other dynamic situations where your subject is not still. And manual focus is often used for still life, close-up macro photography, and when the autofocus options mentioned above fail to work properly. Depending on your camera, manufacturer, make and model, you might have other focusing modes available. But these are the three main modes that you will use for almost all of your photos. Okay, let's go through each one of them so that you know when and how to use them. You'll use single shot autofocus to get perfect focus in most photography situations. Let me show you how it works. Okay, I want to photograph this beautiful flower in this park. Because there is no movement in this scene, it's best to use single shot autofocus. Most all cameras are already on single shot by default, but if for some reason yours is not, I would like to give you a quick demo. Okay, to activate this mode on this Fujifilm mirrorless camera, I switch the focus function button to S, which stands for single shot autofocus. It's possible that your camera could have a different way to turn on single shot autofocus. There's probably a button or dial somewhere on the body of your camera or on your camera's lens. Your switch will usually list AFS or S for single shot autofocus, AFC or C for continuous autofocus, and MF or M for manual focus. Select AFS or S for now. Now, when I initiate taking a picture, my camera focuses on whatever is at the center of the composition as indicated by the small green rectangle in the middle of the screen. And when I take the photo, I get a perfectly sharp image. But what if you don't want to have your subject in the center of the frame? I still want to focus on that beautiful flower, except I want to position it slightly to the side of the frame for the purpose of my composition following the rule of thirds. To achieve this, we'll use a technique called focus and recompose. First, aim your camera at the subject so it's in the middle of the frame, which would be the flower. Press your shutter button halfway down to lock your focus, and while keeping the button halfway pressed, compose the shot as you want it to look. The focus will remain on your subject even if it's not in the center of the image anymore. Press the shutter button fully to take the photo, and when we take the photo, the flower is still perfectly in focus. One thing to keep in mind, if the subject is moved toward you or away from you while the shutter button is halfway pressed down, or if your camera moves toward or away from your subject, your subject will not be in focus anymore. That's because by pressing the shutter button halfway down, you are locking the focal distance. You're telling the camera, this is the exact distance to our subject, and that's where it should focus. If we change the distance, the photo won't have focus sharpness anymore. Here's an example of what I mean. If I first lock in the focus by pressing the shutter halfway down, then I move my camera just a bit closer to the flower, the flower is not in focus anymore. Let's look at the two photos side by side. On the left, you see the original shot. On the right, we have a shot where I moved just a little bit closer to the subject, and it is clearly out of focus. So the first shot is so much better. So be careful not to change the distance to your subject as you are recomposing. 
you can get even more control of where your camera focuses by using the focus area feature. By default, your camera will focus on whatever is at the center of the image. Using the focus area feature, you can tell your camera what part of your picture should be in focus. Right now, I want to photograph this beautiful Mexican street scene with cactus plants and festive mannequins. Let's take a look at how I focus my camera on either the mannequins or the cacti by using the focus area feature. On this Fujifilm camera, I'm pressing the function button again and then navigating to the focus area options. I'm now offered many different choices, one of them being what's sometimes called the wide option. This means that the camera will try to decide what to focus on based on the entire scene. If we select this option, it gives the camera the ability to focus on whatever is in the composition, which may not always be the best idea. For example, in this case, it decided on its own to focus on the cactus plants, which may be not exactly what I wanted if I wanted to focus on the mannequins. Actually, I suggest that whenever you have a static, non-moving subject, you use either the center focus area as we've done so far with the focus and recompose technique or the flexible spot option. Now, it's called the flexible spot because you can tell your camera exactly where to focus. If we decide to focus only on the cactus plants in the foreground, we tell the camera to focus there, which your camera's arrow keys or joystick uh, will take you. We take the image and the cactus plants are perfectly sharp. Whereas if we want to focus only on the mannequins in the background, we can also do that. Once again, we set the focus by pressing the arrow keys or moving the joystick left, right, up, down to choose our desired focus area. With that focus area rectangle illuminated, we are exactly focusing on what we want and we can take a successful photo. If we look at both images side by side, they look very different depending on where we focused. For example, the first image, the cactus plants are focused sharply and the mannequins have a lovely background blur. With the second shot, the opposite is happening where the mannequins are sharp, but the cactus have a, a nice, smooth, out of focus look. So, if you want to have full control over where your camera focuses, be sure to use flexible spot focus area mode. Or you can also use the focus and recompose technique I showed you earlier. You can go with whatever technique you feel is easier to use. Give each of them a try and stick with the one that you like the most. Okay, so these techniques are great for static shots, but how do you focus when your subject is moving? If that's the case, your best bet is what is called continuous autofocus. We're now at this wonderful Mexican street and I want to photograph classic colorful vehicles that are moving toward me. I simply won't have the time to focus on them first with single shot autofocus and then take the photo. So I'll instead choose continuous autofocus. Setting your camera to continuous autofocus is quite simple actually. But on your camera, it may look slightly different than mine. On this Fujifilm camera and many other makes and models, the focus modes are a switch on the body of the camera. Your switch may be on your lens or possibly accessed digitally within your rear LCD screen after you press your function or menu button. I'm switching from the previous mode, which was single shot, to continuous mode, which is signified by the letter C. Some cameras will use the three letters AFC, which is the same thing. Within the continuous autofocus mode, you can still tell the camera if you want to choose spot autofocusing, where you choose the initial focus location, or centered, where the camera will choose a focus point anywhere within the center area of your frame, or wide, where the camera can choose to focus on any object within the entire picture space. Because uh, I will be photographing a car coming toward me from a certain location, I will be using spot as my initial focus uh, mode so I can initially focus on the car at the distance and then it'll track all the way toward me and I'll show you how that works. 
One more point. Because I want to show you how effective this mode is for moving subjects, I'll set my camera to continuous shooting mode, which is also sometimes called rapid fire or sports mode. This will tell the camera to take many consecutive photos back to back without the need of me continually pressing the shutter button. Okay, so let's begin by doing a demo. I'm gonna wait until a classic green San Miguel de Allende taxi comes toward me. And let's see if this camera can actually track the vehicle coming toward me all the way. Okay, beautiful. So I was able to get the, the wonderful green taxis of San Miguel and the tracking looks good. Let me put these images up on screen so you can see. Now, when we flip through the pictures, what we can see is that the taxi is good and sharp and the background has a slight blur. And that shows me that it's successful. The camera was indeed able to track the distance between the camera and the vehicle, even though the vehicle was moving toward me. Okay, so that's a little bit how autofocus continuous works. It's amazing for sports photography in any situation where vehicles or any object is coming toward your camera. You may be wondering, why don't we use continuous autofocus all the time? After all, it can track your subjects when it moves and it can also find a static subject. And it's just so much more convenient not to switch between focus modes all the time. Well, there are two reasons not to use continuous autofocus all the time. Number one is saving battery life. It takes so much camera battery and processing power to use continuous tracking. The other reason for not using continuous autofocus all the time is performance. Although continuous autofocus is amazingly smart at realizing where your subject is, it's just not as good at setting focus for static subjects as single shot autofocus. By using single shot autofocus for static subjects, you'll simply get better results. Your photos will be sharper. But if you want to have perfect focus on moving subjects, you should go with continuous autofocus. While single shot autofocus and continuous autofocus are great for almost all photography scenarios, sometimes they are not enough. That's when you need to switch to manual focus to get a perfectly sharp image. So, what are the scenarios when you'd switch to manual mode? For one, it could be that the autofocus mode just doesn't work because there's not enough contrast in the scene. For example, when you want to photograph a wall or a desk surface. Also, manual focus is the preferred focus mode for taking macro photos. Or it could be that maybe you want to take a, a perfect image and have the time to play around with your manual focus to get the exact photo that you want. It could be a beautiful low-light cityscape or a posed portrait in studio conditions. Manual focus could work better in these cases as well. In my case, I want to photograph this beautiful yellow wall. Uh, and I have a really nice trim uh, on the upper section of the wall where we're going to have this the beautiful uh, dark silhouette of leaves. Now, here's the problem. The wall has no texture and no features. You can see, I'm gonna put uh, an example up on the screen right now. It's beautiful yellow, but there's nothing for my camera to focus on. Let me give you a demo here. So I have my camera in autofocus mode, and I'm going to attempt to take a picture in autofocus. Now, what I hear is my autofocus motor is sort of searching or hunting for focus, but it doesn't see anything. That's why it's struggling. And it's really not locking on to anything of um, any, any contrast. So it doesn't take the picture. Now it's true that I have a little trim of, uh, of leaves at the top, but because I'm in centered focus mode, there's really nothing to focus on. So this is where manual focus is gonna come in so well, because I can clearly define well, do I want those little trims of leaves to have sharp focus or do I want them blurry to sort of pretend that they're shadows? There's so much fine-tuned creative control when you're dealing with manual focus. Okay, so let's see what happens when I switch to manual focus mode. And on this Fuji camera, it's a little switch on the body itself. But as I said before, 
you may access it on your lens or within your back LCD screen, depending on your camera make and model. Okay, so now in manual focus mode, I'm actually going to rotate my manual focus ring that's on the end of my lens. And I have the exact scenario that I want. I want the leaves to be crisp for this picture. Now I want to take one more picture where the leaves are not crisp, but they are sort of out of focus to pretend that they are uh, deep shadows. So I'm going to turn my focus ring and I got the picture. So I have two versions and this is only possible uh, really quickly at least uh, by using manual focus mode. Now there's so much more I'd like to tell you about digital photography and while I didn't hold anything back there's only so much I could share with you in such a short video. And that's why I've recorded an entire video course about taking incredible photos with your digital camera. And in case you rely entirely on your camera's auto settings, this course will let you finally take your camera off of the auto mode. So if you'd like to find out more about my digital photography course, you'll find more information right under this video. So take a look at my full digital photography course, and I hope to see you there.